So an, in, an interesting thing with the side effect of the pandemic for the music industry has been the artists themselves taking control over their connection with their audiences and then building audiences. So this is Ron. We've known each other since 1988. Art director. He's in town in Seattle for a a shoot. The shoot ended. One day shoot. Shoot shoot. We can't say what it is, because otherwise um, I signed an NDA. Yes, you did. It's top secret. Yeah, we, uh, so he lives in, uh, he lives in the Haight-Ashbury. He lives six blocks from where I was born. Is that right? St. Mary's. St. Are you uh, about six blocks from here? Yeah. So my take? dad, my dad was, uh, lived on Page Street. My mother lived on Page Street way back, like way before I was born, when she was a child. It was a big Jewish area there. Yeah. Well, the Western, uh, the Fillmore area was a big Jewish area before it became an African-American uh, neighborhood. That's, it's like the Mission, which is a, a Latin neighborhood, now a hipster neighborhood, it used to be an Irish neighborhood. You know, neighborhoods change. So, talk, okay, talk about record business. So, I went off to see where my dad was born, because they lived on Page Street uh, when my grandparents immigrated from Scotland. Well, my dad lived on Page and Haight. Or Page and, um, what's the one below Haight? Uh, well, Page is for Haight. Right? Oh, 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 Page yeah. and, um, and like, like uh, Broderick. Broderick. So, okay, oh, actually, so I'm good. sorry. My, my mother lives on Broderick near Page. So that would be lower than Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Than yeah. By the DMV. Yeah. Sort of, right? Yeah. Yep. Up the, yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. We're talking San Francisco. And no, someone, probably someone in Sweden is watching this. And you have no idea what we're talking about. And there is that guy in, um, I forgot where. There's a Jewish guy in Toronto. He has no idea what I'm talking about. It's kind of like digital gramophone. It makes no sense. You know what that means? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, I interrupted you. Um, so the um, so the the, the uh, music artists taking control of their brand. Would you say their brand or their persona or connecting with their audiences through? Video podcast? What are we calling them? Well, everybody... YouTube channels? You mean during the pandemic? Yeah. Well, like, uh, um, what's his name? The uh, King Crimson guy. Robert Fripp and Robert his wife. Robert Fripp and his wife yeah. did a channel. Toya. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And um, uh, Bobby Whitlock. Oh, I didn't bitch, see. Bobby Whitlock and his wife have a, have a channel. Oh. And he talks about Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton, All Things Must Pass, George Harrison. Uh, Bill Bruford has a channel now, the drummer that's on every single prog album ever recorded. Did you know that? I did not. Why? Well, it's what is? I I believe that. That he was on every prog record ever now, recorded. Yeah. Now, what about? Well, uh, virtually every prog. Everyone, everyone. Okay. I mean, he was on Neil Peart. Everyone thinks Neil Peart played in on Rush. In Rush, it was all Bill Bruford. No, it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's an interesting conspiracy theory. Hey, it, so, Mazzy says it, it's so. So, the, um, uh, so who's the other? Leland Sklar? Oh, Lee, Lee Sklar, the great tall bearded man who played with James Taylor and Linda Ronstadt and, and um, you know, Before Carly everybody. Simon. Everyone, he's like the L.A. guy. Sure. He, he, he plays on albums you don't even want to know that he's Warren Zevon. So, Warren Zevon. Well, you're you're he, picking the best of the... Uh, he, but he's great. I like his channel. I don't watch every video. He does, every, he does like a well, daily thing. I think he's reached, what, a thousand? He's like close to now a thousand videos. So I have like 900 videos. Yeah, okay. Well, he has more subscribe. I have 21,000. He's got... We gotta ask. 
So, somebody in the comments tell me how many subscribers Leland Scar has. Maybe I, we, him and I can do a shootout sometime. So he's, he's been good about posting every day. He yeah. gets up every morning and posts. And sometimes it's non, sometimes he's like apologetic because I have nothing to say, but at least he does it. The, so he is now noted as playing bass on more albums than any other bass player in, known to man. Really? Yeah, he holds some record. It's like 20,000 songs or some in number. So, Okay. Look it up, but I, uh, you tell, I want to see if you can name really fast five bass players. Go. Jack Bruce, Lee Scar, <laughs> Paul McCartney, Bill Wyman. So Bill Wyman, okay. How many was that? Four. Yeah, okay. Four. Okay. Yeah. And James Stewart. That's five. McVie. You know, there's like. Uh, no, no, those are good ones. Okay. So James Stewart, who did James Stewart play? For? James Stewart. James Stewart. James Stewart. James Stewart. Uh, well, well, uh, Alicia's been arrested. That's Jimmy Stewart. Was he played? I didn't know he played bass. Robin Trower. A oh, Robin. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. So. Um, this was going to be a short, you know, YouTube has these things shorts, but this is too long to be a yep. short. But what we, where we were going was how artists now have created these... <laughs> and they're very informative. Like, I found them to be very, um, you know, yeah. really interested in their personalities come through. So, what I mentioned to Norman, which you didn't know, was Mazzy, Mazzy. Justin Hawkins from The Darkness. He, he now has, like, he posts daily and he has a topic and makes it complete and it's. It's, they're, they're really enlightening. It's really good. Well, you know, David Lynch does the weather every day. He does? He, do the he does the weather. Day? Looking outside my window, I think it's kind of like uh, sunny and 72 outside my window. That's how David Lynch talks. Yeah. And he does it every day. Yeah, it's a little and sticky. And it's like a minute. It's two minutes. Yeah, it's a little sticky. It's but, a little sticky. But, the, but I get a lot out of these these artists because they're talking about other music and music that influenced them. Or they're making very astute criticism, it, critiques of, of songs. So of basically it's kind industry. of what I do, except I'm not famous. It, it is. It, yeah. No, I'm a nobody, but, um, but somebody's so, watching. So what's... what's, what's Kind of the growth of it now is what is the the significance of that music? So it's not just pop music anymore or genre music. What, what is the music? What is the role that music plays in people's lives and the people who have created it? Well, and that's kind of a lost part of it. It's, you know, it's, it's it's easy for somebody to be attributed as you know a song or an artist or a genre but what's behind that that's created that music i think what, what's great about youtube that, that i found for me at least um uh, and it's i think that people who have watched my channel most of the people have been responsive because i try to tell a story of my background it's not like that my my life is that interesting but it brings it the context to the music, like, you know, obviously you and I are from the Bay Area. I'm, I'm what, four or five years older than you, being in San Francisco, and that was a great time and place. Now, there are people, I've, I've stated this on my channel, that they'll say, this guy won't shut up, he won't get to the point, I just want to hear the fucking list. Well, that's for other people to do. I like to have the story behind it. So, you're talking about these artists, talking about the history, the recording, how the songs, uh, what they, what influenced them. I think that's really interesting, and that's the kind of videos that I watch more than um, anything else, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, whether it's someone famous or or not famous, or other people like in this vinyl community doing videos, the people that talk about the personal connection with records and music is something that really, really interests me, and I connect with. Yeah, and there's also some, I found this in full bloom, I think it's called, and um, 
I don't know who the guy is, but he, he, he's somebody who's very knowledgeable about the music industry. And he, what's that TV show where the guy has the heavy metal artists come on and they, and they play? It, well, anyway, short story, you know, long story short, he interviews the behind the scenes people. And a lot of it's about that. 80s and 90s metal that was started by Van Halen and Ozzy Osbourne and, and Motley Crue. There were all those bands that came in like Rat and um, Poison. But it's from the, he interviews the producers, the guys who were hired by the labels to work with these bands. And he exposes all the background where the bands couldn't even play the music. So he had ringers come in and play the lead parts and teach the band how to play the parts. Well, here's what's interesting about it. It's like Milli Vanilli? Well, no, not not so much like that, but it's 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 just, it's this inside of the music industry where a producer has a lot of weight and a producer gets assigned to a band to make sure their album is turned into like Sandy something. Like Sandy Perlman? You know Sandy Perlman? Well, Pearlman? it's, it, it's even, they're guys you don't even know. I mean, you've never heard of these guys and they're incredibly smart about the radio. Hey, can, can we take a little moment? Should I do a whack-a-mole here? You, you, hold the camera up. <laughs> We're, we're in Rob Roy, in Rob Roy the bar in Seattle and Belltown. Let's see. So Mazzy just basically cut me off. He doesn't want to hear about it. He's going to do a whack-a-mole. I have no idea what this is. Ah! The mole just got whacked. <laughs> okay, I'll do three and we'll see if I fail completely. Number two. <laughs> Roger Williams, fabulous century. Um, Rob, Roger Williams is a very, uh, this is Columbia, right? Oh, Cap Records. Um, very middle of the road in the 1960s he was popular uh, composer orchestra band leader what a great that's actually a great cover right you, you like that cover <laughs> look at that that's kind of like mid-century shit yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy is important <laughs> Albert Einstein. Okay, final one. Okay, let's see what he's got. No, no, start over. That's too easy. Well, lovely, put it, put it back. Tony Bennett, you know, but he, he sings. He sang the ultimate song about San Francisco. What's interesting about this, this isn't even on Columbia Records, his label. What label is this? Maybe it is. Talk about it. Look at that nose, man. What a great Italian-American. I've never seen this. MGM Verve. I've never seen this record in my entire life. But we all know Tony Bennett. What a great, still a great voice. He's 117 now, and he still sings opening up uh, for Giants games in San Francisco. All right, finish your story. Come on, grab one more from the bottom row there. Those are, ma those are magazines, not records. <laughs> All right, go for one more. Go one more? Come on, yeah, because it's... <laughs> okay, come on, one more. <laughs> Although that is a good album. Uh, the Pest Mode. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I um. 
So what is the I've never heard this, uh, the Pesh Mode album. What's the Pesh Mode name? It's, it's the mode, the Fast Pesh fashion. Mode. Fast fashion. You know what's great is, what's that Depeche Mode song that Johnny Cash made famous? Oh, yeah. Um, the Rick Rubin session. Rick Rubin, right. yeah, yeah. I don't have this record. I only have, I only have one Depeche Mode record. I don't know this record. I know their music, but I was never, I was never into them in the day. I heard, would hear them like out at bars and clubs, but never the Depeche Mode. But look at that hair. Look at those hair dudes. Yeah. Anyway, that's the Depeche Mode. So thanks, Ron. Depeche Mode. All right. So we're just working. Okay. Let's wait. 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 Okay, we're, uh, okay. No, I didn't interrupt him because I've known Ron since 1988, and um, so the record goes. Anyway, watch. No, it's it, it, just interesting. All the stuff that you know, and it, it seems like it's been, you know, instigated by the pandemic. That everybody felt this need to still be present with their audiences and. Some of these people have discovered that they're actually pretty knowledgeable and charismatic. You know, I think even Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree, he had a great podcast where he would recreate, he would by himself with multiple instruments, he would play songs from his library for his audience. It was a great thing. And I finally got into Porcupine Tree just recently. The new album is. Uh, I haven't heard it. It's not out yet. Two or the four. It's, it's, was the new, the um, new single was just. A you like it? Single. You like it? Yeah, it's like it's a it's a shit story. Okay. Well, thank you, Ron, uh, for visiting Seattle with me. There's more to come tomorrow night. Yeah, we're gonna do more. We're gonna do more. Take care. Mazzy loves you.